Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Math Blog. I uh, hope you guys are doing well and you're having fun in math. Uh, this lesson is we're going to model mixed number division. So this is uh, lesson 2-8 in our textbook we're following. And don't forget, all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Okay, so there's our common core strand for our groovy teachers. And our question here is, uh, how can we use a model to show um, division of mixed numbers? So we'll do a couple of models in this lesson here. So here, Mrs. Uh, Hoax is a sixth grade teacher at, at Knowlton Elementary School, and she has one and two thirds cups of baking soda and is performing a science experiment with her students by mixing uh, one sixth cup of baking soda uh, with vinegar. So if she uses the same amount of baking soda for each experiment, how many times does she perform the experiment? Okay, so she has one and two thirds cups total and she's making one sixth cups of baking soda. Okay, so which operation should we use uh, to find our answer? Well, this one is a, a division one right here because we're finding the number of uh, six size uh, cups that we can fit into this one and two thirds size cup right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use pattern blocks uh, to uh, represent one and two thirds. Okay, so since we're dealing with six, you guys, I figure we'll start with a hexagon right here. So a hexagon has six sides, so we'll use that as our hole right there, and then we're going to cut this up into thirds because this is one and two thirds. So if we cut it up into thirds, uh, it'll look like that. So, um, and what happens is, is these are nice little rhombuses. Rhombi is plural for rhombuses, so we'd say rhombi. There's one rhombus, one rhombus, one rhombus. Okay, rhombus is a four-sided equilateral uh, uh, quadrilateral. Anyways, you'll learn that later when you get into high school right there. But four sides right there, so there's four sides. What happens uh, when we divide that hexagon? So two of these will represent, here's one whole, this hexagon, and then this is two of the three over here. So here's one and two thirds right there, okay? So here we have one hexagon block and two rhombus blocks, or two rhombis, okay? All right, so now we're going to use the blocks to show one and two thirds uh, blocks above being divided uh, by one sixth. Okay, so think um, uh, uh, one block represents. So so it looks like um, uh, these triangles represents a hole right there. So so if we cut it up into six, then we just go right down the middle, right down the middle, and right down the middle, and it makes these little triangles right here. So uh, one triangle represents one sixth of that hole right there. Okay. So how many triangles covers all uh, one, here's one and two thirds right there. So let's make this a triangle and make this a triangle right here. And then so how many triangles do we have? There's six over here and there's uh, four more over here. So that's going to give us a 10 of total, 10 total triangles right there. So one and two thirds, here's the one and the two thirds. And when we divide it by six, Here's the six, um, uh, the one six size triangles. We get ten right there. Okay, so don't forget to answer the question. Mrs. Hope can perform the experiment how many times? Ten times with her students right there. Okay. All right, so how can we check that our answer is reasonable? Well, uh, we had the problem 1 and 2 thirds equals 1 6 equals 10. So what we can do is use compatible numbers and round this guy to 2. So 2 divided by 1 6 is 12. And since 12 is close to that 10 right there, we can think that our answer is reasonable right there. OK. All right, so tell how our model shows a related multiplication problem. Well, OK, that it shows that there's 10 groups of 1 6, or those 10 triangles right there, and that gave us one and two thirds. And so to relate it for a multiplication problem, 10 times 1 6 equals one and two thirds. Okay. And then uh, suppose a mixed number is divided by fractions between zero and one. So think of a fraction like uh, one half. Okay. So is the quotient, the quotient is the answer, is the answer greater than or less than the dividend? The dividend is the number that we started with. Okay, so suppose that a mixed number, the number that we start with, is divided by a number between 0 and 1, like a half. Is our answer going to be uh, less than or, or greater than the quotient? And explain. Well, it's definitely going to be greater than, you guys, since we're finding out how many groups of a number less than 1 there are in a given mixed number, there would need to be more groups that are in that mixed number right there. So for example, right here, if we had 4 and a half divided by an eighth right there, 
uh, it represents the number of eighths uh, in four and a half. And since one eighth is less than one, there's definitely more groups of one eighth in four and a half than there are groups of one in four and a half. Okay, I hope that makes sense. All right, so um, uh, we can use a model to divide a mixed number by a whole number, and that's what we're going to do with this one. So David has two and a half quarts of punch. He wants to divide the punch equally between two pitchers. How many quarts of punch uh, should he pour into each pitcher? Okay, so what we're going to do is divide uh, this two and a quarter quarts right here, divided by the two pitchers right here. So we're going to figure out how many quarts are going to be in each pitcher right there. Okay, so let's draw a model to represent the total amount of punch. So think, okay, we're going to divide three holes into because it's going to represent this two and one fourth. So we're going to divide three holes into fourths right there to represent to, so we can cover the, the two and a fourth. Okay, so let's go ahead. Here's three holes right here. Okay, so this would be one hole, two hole, three hole right here. So now we're going to cut those up into fourths. Okay, so there they are cut up into fourths right right there. All right, and then, uh, so now we're going to go ahead and shade. How much are we going to shade to represent this problem? We're going to shade two and one-fourth right there, okay? So let's go ahead and, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's take that off right there. I pressed the wrong one. So let's shade uh, two and one-fourth, okay? So there's there's uh, one hole, there's two hole, and then this fourth right there. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to draw the parts that represent the amount that are in each pitcher. How many pitchers are there? Well, there's two pitchers. So what are we trying to find? We're trying to find how much is in each of the two groups, the two pitchers right there. So we're going to cut this up so in half. So each one gets one quart and one quart, and then we're going to split this fourth into halves right there. Okay, so Sorry, I had to slide that up right there to make some room. So in each of these two equal groups, there's going to be, they're going to have one hole right there. And then they're going to have, uh, how much are they going to have of this fourth? Each of the pitchers are going to have half of the fourth right there. Okay, so one half of one fourth. Well, what's half of a fourth? That's one eighth right there. All right, so uh, two and a fourth divided by two. Here's two and a fourth, and then if we take it and cut it in half, each one gets a whole quart plus an eighth of a quart, okay? So this one gets a whole quart plus this eighth of a quart right there. So two and a quarter divided by two is one and one eighth. So David should pour one and one eighth quarts of punch into each pitcher. Yummy, I love punch. All right, you guys, I hope that lesson makes sense, and be nice to your teacher. Take care.